A warm welcome to this video as always and we're delighted to welcome back Professor Angus Dalgleish. Professor, welcome and, and thank you for coming back. Thank you. We were just talking, chatting there before we came on about how well your previous videos have been received. Um, I think, I think it, do you think this shows there's kind of a, a real hunger for proper scientific medical information from experts such as yourself? Well, clearly, I think there is. And I think the reason for this is the fact that the experts, uh, the establishment, everybody from the chief scientific officer, chief medical officer, uh, the sage people, the head of the Royal Colleges, the head of the NHS, they have all failed to engage. And they, when they do, they lie to us. They, it is very clear that they have lied to us completely, thinking it is for our own benefit. And they're doing us some kind of favour while patting us on the back and saying, you know, we're following the science and the science is settled, so you don't need to know any more. Somebody, people are not stupid. I can't tell you, it's rather like a blanket or an iron curtain has been lifted about the pandemic everywhere. I mean, people are just suddenly waking up. There are those who always knew and very suspicious, but those who fell for it are actually admitting now that the... I fell for it. I couldn't believe it. And it, it is really quite amazing. Mm. And they're still carrying it on. And it's gone to, to everything. You know, the way I've mentioned it before, the way they treated uh, the sub-postmasters, uh, telling them that, oh, you're the only one. Well, that's what they've done to myself and several others of us. And we started to doubt whether, whether we were saying about this. And now they're doing it all with the uh, climate change as well. I mean, people are waking up to that, but... You know, it's, it's all a complete, uh, you do what we tell you, don't ask questions. And that, that is what I'm fighting about. I want the absolute proper discourse and debate about everything because everything I look into and research, research very carefully, I realise they have deliberately lied to us or they're incredibly stupid, but they can't be that stupid, otherwise they wouldn't have got to where they were to... Be able, be able to enhance their careers, which appears to be their uh, number one and only mission in life, as opposed to yeah. doing what it says on the tin. <laughs> that, that's certainly a separate debate, but it is rather bizarre when people say uh, <laughs> we're being scientific uh, by being uh, while they're being unscientific. Mm. Now, you, you mentioned there that people aren't stupid, and of course they're not. We've mm. got intelligent, a lot of in people intelligent people listen to this but people often do lack the specific knowledge and I, I i put myself in that category it took a long time before i realized that we were wandering well and truly down a, a garden path mm. and specifically in terms of cancers i've been worried about the possibility of post vaccine cancer probably for about nine months now but you realized there was a danger very early on in fact the first person in the world, I think, to realise there was this danger. When was that and what, what, what was the sort of science and medical thinking that made you think, just a minute, there's a problem down the line here? Well, I mean, I was in a very uh, fortunate situation to, to witness this because I had been uh, working with melanoma patients and treating them with very early immunotherapies long before it became fashionable. And uh, I had a lot of patients who had responded really well and they were stable. I mean, they'd been stage four and I treated them with vaccines, uh, cytokines like interleukin-2, all the early things. And there they were, doing really well, completely stable. And then some of them had been induced on trials with these new antibody checkpoint inhibitors, the ones that have become standard, like Keytruda and Nivolumab. Uh, they've all got funny names. <laughs> you know what They tend to end in MAB. Right, they tend to end in MAB. And then I was doing a clinic, and I thought at the end of it, I have seen four patients now who I strongly suspect of uh, uh, progression, and I sent them off for scans to prove it, and that my sense was correct in all of them. All of them had disease relapse. And having been at this game, particularly with the melanoma, for well over 25 years, I have seen patients do well and then relapse before, and I think what is 
what is the cause? Well, I, I found the cause. I found that the ones where this had happened before, there was a, a bereavement and extreme depression. There was a, a totally you know, unexpected divorce. The person had been left uh, uh, very depressed. And in another case, they'd um, been uh, made bankrupt by a business partner who didn't think they were going to survive and wouldn't notice it. <laughs> you know, terrible. So... That's the first thing I look for, because all those things cause depression, and that causes immune suppression. It takes at least three months of that. You're not going to be upset at losing on the horses and going into a relapse, put it that way. You know, this is really something that causes immune suppression. And I found that not one of them would admit to any of these things. And I told them, that's what I was looking for. And they said, what has happened that is different? And they said, well, absolutely nothing. And I said, have you had any other treatments? What about the vaccine? Ah, oh, yes. It had a jab. First, second, no problem. It was all the booster. And then when I realised the booster, I went back and asked questions. And I found nearly all of them hadn't felt well since the booster. They were perfectly OK. They hadn't felt well they felt a bit more tired, run down, and a bit more fluey, achy. This is obviously a cytokine uh, release from a totally unnecessary prod of a nice working sleeping immune system doing its job. Systemic you know, inflammation, really, isn't it? Systemic inflammation. Mm. And then I asked them the relationship between the jab and being aware of their cancer. That's important. I mean, aware of the changes. Yeah. It was between three weeks and three months. And, you know, if it was going to happen, say, three or four weeks, uh, why about 12 months? Well, if it happens deep down inside of you, it has to really get going before you're aware of the symptoms. So that's why there's this period of three to 12 months. And... Mm -hmm. Then I found that, that that was, I got up to half a dozen and I thought, wait a minute, there's something going on here. So at half a dozen, I, sh I shouted, I screamed, the canary in the mine, or the waving the red flag, whatever it took. And I was told, pure anecdotal, nothing to see here, shut up. And by the way, you'll upset cancer patients. Be quiet about this. And I, <laughs> I said, you know, I suspect this is doing them harm. My uh, uh, vow was to first do no harm. I don't want anybody else to have a booster until we can possibly show that what I'm observing is anecdotal, pure coincidence, and it's a one in a million chance, and I just happen to be in the wrong place. But at any rate, as soon as it was published, I got contacted from all over the place, Australia, South Africa, Europe, South America, North America, Canada. I mean, all say we're seeing the same thing. So I knew then it was real. And because of the immunology, the virology immunology, I've been doing really basic research and vaccines. I knew it fitted a, a, a pattern that I'd seen in my research, I think, and it's an adage now I would go, uh, I would use that if a vaccine, after being given one little boost, one, two, if it subsequently needs a booster, it doesn't work. Give up, don't try. And then I found I'd actually got a model where one vaccine was good, the second one only good if the first one was a little subpar, but the third one removed all benefit. And the fourth one disturbed the immune system so much that the disease you were trying to prevent was actually fueled by it. And I suddenly thought, is this what I'm watching here? Because I said, I actually honestly think it was. And it was um, three people I knew very well all went ill after having the booster. All three of them only had the booster, otherwise they couldn't travel. This, this, was the, uh, this was the madness. Why would did the government insist you had to travel when they, they knew at the time? We now know Fauci knew very, very early on that the vaccine did not prevent transmission. Yet he insisted all school children had it to look after other people. It was all madness. The great, great psychosis uh, uh, it, it was, was going on here. Possibly worse, but you know, that's the, uh, that's the um, kind version.